Hallelujah. Be seated. You may be seated. Welcome to church family. It's don't know when last I told you of the the surrealness of the the surrealness of the privilege of being God's servant concerning you. It's a privilege all the time. And these days, many things reminding me never to take it for granted. And, and God has different ways of reminding me and reminding us. Just want to bless God for the grace of the call and for your patience. For your patience in different ways. I remind you once in a while to let you know that I'm aware. I was trained a Catholic priest. I had a different life completely, a different orientation and vision about ministry. What I, we have been doing together for a couple of years and what I'm doing, I will continue to do. These are things that are purely by the help of God, nothing of a training that you can say, oh, your formal training. Yes, there is a dimension and a huge dimension of the formal training I received towards the Catholic priesthood in discipline and, and many areas that have helped what I do in such a way that you cannot even talk about it such that you need to have been who I have been to have that help but since it is something totally, absolutely and completely outside the context of my formal and intentional training so it's something that comes with trial and her error in different areas, mistakes and missteps. Humility just demands that all the time you acknowledge that and to appreciate the fact of your patience and knowing that as you are growing, I'm also growing. I'm growing as a pastor. I'm growing as a husband. I'm growing as a father. I'm growing as a leader of a movement a leader of an organization and in many areas and struggling in all of this to grow as a child of God so, so you know that I'm aware and that you also be patient with me and give me more gap <laughs> to grow the only way to grow is to make mistakes as long as those mistakes are not deliberately made but the only way we learn is it not to stumble here and there and learn from them so thank you so very much the first Sunday in June, a communion assembly and our first experience, our first experiment at combining communion and the family experience. We had taken break because, you know, what we are doing is so dynamic, so fluid, so, ev so evolving that you cannot say we have a tradition. Nobody can say, oh, we have been there for long. This is how we do it. We are still figuring out. We are walking by revelation daily. And when you walk with God, it's very, very, it takes high level of humility, discipline, and obedience and submission to get it right. Because God doesn't tell you too many things at a time. Just drop something. And he trusts you to run with it. And when you reach another point, it drops. And he, he trusts that you will run. And you don't ask too many questions because you are dealing with, with authority, not the highest authority, the only authority from which and from where every authority derives its essence. So you have to be humble all the time and then when you didn't get it right, you also acknowledge I'm still struggling to figure it out because you are dealing with mysteries and the unknown who is totally sovereign and is only what he wants you to know at the time he wants you to know it that you know it. No matter how much you fast and pray, he does not work with your time, he works with his time, which is why he's sovereign and the almighty God. So, by the grace of God, it's just to let you know that if God sent you to be in this place, just have to be like water, keep flowing. Follow me. Don't judge me when you don't understand me. Pray for me. And if you were asked to be here, just know that somehow God is taking us to where he wants to take us to. So don't judge. Pray for me. For my leaders, at any point you need clarification, talk to me. 
Don't talk about me. It does not make sense. Talk to me. Pray for me. Because we are trying to figure this out. And it's making a whole lot of sense. I've been struggling not to talk about it. Last night I went to bed very sad. Very, 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 very sad. I kept talking about it until I could sleep off that I was sad. Because <clears throat> somebody who had taken the same decision that I've taken. I always tell people that the Catholic Church trains ministers for the church. There is no understanding somewhere else. So for you to succeed outside, you must be helped by a help that is greater than every other help. And it takes a high level of humility and submission. You must be broken completely and humble for you to come to that place of help. Somebody that I know is better than me, finer, more intelligent, more gifted and in talented, I believe more spiritual. I just see him taking decisions. I just see him like, I don't want to describe it. And I just share it with the first lady, my sadness, my sorrow. Just, oh, I wish I could help. But you know, in life, there are too many people who cannot help. Just, oh, I wish I could help. But then, the other side of it, the counterpoint of it is, oh, how privileged you are. That's it. In as much as it shows me the privilege of the help I have and the progress we have made, I wouldn't want that to be the reason why I see the help. I already see it. I would like everybody to do well and excel and do better. But then it shows us that we are enjoying on common grace. There's big progress happening in this place in the face of apparent nothing happening. You know, a huge thing is going on in the Ruach community. Leadership is breaking forth. And what is happening in the Ruach School of Minis, uh, School of uh, Encounters? Great things are happening. Just you know, different things are popping up here and there. And here, by the grace of God, we are trying to put structures in place. And, um, and God is about doing something. I say God is about doing something. Yeah, it's been a long season of preparation. I'm trusting God very soon things, a lot of things will settle. But just to let you know, be grateful to God for me and pray for people like me. That we need God's help and your prayers. Thank you so very much. Today I came to announce to you we are beginning the spiritual warfare in June today. So on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, into next Sunday, we are dealing with the devourer or devourers. Today, I had been thinking of oh, coming to talk about the 24 again, awaken the family spirit, now that we are going back to meeting in the divisions after this and all of that. But the Holy Spirit made it very clear to me that we have, we have issues to settle concerning the virus. Get ready to pray today during this communion service and as special as you receive the communion. Have understanding of what you do with the communion. But then, for those of you who don't like showing up in church during program, I, it's a choice you have to make. When God calls me home, I will be judged, not by your response. I will be judged by my effort and my commitment and my zeal and my own sacrifice. And I celebrate God for each and every one of you, the divisions, the ministers who went to pay final respect to a very dear gem, very beautiful gift that God sent to me and to Grace Family, Sister Atom Ariko, one of the best I have ever met in a call, who had to relocate from Calabar after retirement to serve God in Grace Family and to grow. Serve, she did. Grow, she did. She grew. Okay. But she's gone to rest. And her own chapter is completely closed. I can no longer help her. No word that I preach. No ministry can ever help her. One day, my turn will come. No human prayer will help me. No fasting and prayer will help me. No prophecy will help me. If you allow me, I will also tell you the same thing. A day comes. Once you are born, you share that faith. The only difference is in the date. 
the circumstance and your level of preparedness how prepared will you be when that day comes come it will Christianity is teaching a lot of lies right now. A lot of Christian teachers who are lying to people. Perhaps not intentionally, but by impression. Giving people impression. A powerful church is a church no one dies. That church is heaven because no one dies in heaven. Or hell because everyone is dead in hell. If it is a church where men and women attend... <laughs> Just as people are born. The scripture says there is time for everything under the sun. Time to be born. And time to do what? To die. That's given. It's the common currency of humanity. The difference is what happens after that. <laughs> so I'm so proud that God gave me, when I met the family members, I broke down in tears at some moment and they were shocked because they had no tears. They had few questions to ask me concerning her as a, somebody who was a minister and served till the very last minute. But at some moment they didn't see my emotion coming because I had to share with them how close we were and um, the fact of me, God positioned me to help her in a very delicate aspect of her life. Somebody like a Norbon will know about that because they are classmates and close friends. And I realized God sent her for that healing. A very deep healing that had to take place in her life. I mean deep healing that had to come concerning wounds that had first start for a long time. And God knew there was somebody whom he will use to do that and he trusted me. That's when I broke down, that God trusted me. She was a great person, ordained minister and redeemed. Ordained, trained and ordained. And she left all of that to come sit down. I broke down to know that God trusted me that much. So it's a valuable thing to be trusted by God. And that God has called, I means, boy, your job is done. One or two words I will share, especially with ministers at some moment. Um... That maybe it's not for everyone, but with ministers. But it's just to let you know that this call, this job, is to prepare you for life, to be all of God's plan for you here on earth. And then when he taps you and tells you it's time to come home, you will not say, give me till tomorrow. Because there is hardly such a provision that when the time comes, you can negotiate for one week or one month. The only negotiation is preparation. And I pray for you that today that you are prepared to live God's life on earth today and that you are prepared for God's eternal life after earth today. After. In Grace Family, you know, I don't believe, we don't believe, and I let you know that we don't believe in what people say heaven at last. You know, I studied philosophy so I pay attention to words. Heaven at last. That is a very beautiful way of uh, sounding Christian and good, but I just don't feel that is Christianity. It is heaven now. It is heaven now. It is heaven now. If it is heaven now as today, and tomorrow is heaven now as today, and to, next tomorrow it is heaven now that every day you wake up it is heaven when there is nothing like oh, eventually at last so it is now because we don't know which one is this last <laughs> so it's just now I pray for you for encouragement I pray for you that I will not lie I don't have grace in this call to lie <laughs> I don't have grace to make people feel comfortable and tell them half truth just to let you know no one is powerful enough to stop that day when it comes if Papa Deboye could not stop his young son from being snatched away sir <laughs> don't let anybody lie to you Christianity is to come and prepare you for eternity rise to your feet say Father in the name of Jesus Christ 
I receive wisdom from you today. I receive knowledge from you today. I receive revelation from you today. I receive eternal wisdom from you today. I will not live foolish life. No, 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 no. Please pray it even if you don't, you are not serious, just pray it because you need to pray. Say, I will not live foolishly. I will not live senselessly. I live intentionally by your mercy. From today, I live intentionally. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. And I want to thank each and every one of you who showed up and did that. Okay. I share with you today that the devil is a devourer. The devil is a devourer. Write it down. That's the subject matter. We will deal with that today. Deal with that on Thursday. Deal with that on Friday. And on Saturday. That's how we do it. That the devil is a devourer. So we try and find a few things. We just have one scripture. One scripture. We'll talk with it. And pray with it. And take communion with it. And on Thursday we'll begin to peel it. Peel, 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 peel. On Friday. Pray. But by the grace of God. The prayer belt. The prayer belt this week helps you because we are waging war against the devourers, against devourers, and there are many devourers. And our prayer direction in the prayer belt is, Lord, arise, break the might of devourers and consume them with your fire. So that is a communal, you know, the prayer belt is when all of us are united as a family in a corporate grace to deal with one thing with the understanding that whatever we agree and ask shall be done so it's joining your faith with others and you rise at any time between 12 a.m and 4 that's a covenant place whether you spend one hour two hours according to your strength that doesn't mean that's the only time you can pray but that's a covenant zone of the family it is part of the revelation we are given because we are family we are family to stay in the place with one vision, one commission, one direction, and one strength from God. Such that your weakness is helped by the strength of another. And the strength of one person helps another. So we are looking at Psalm, okay, I'm sure the scripture they will be given to you. Psalm 3 and verse 7 to 8. We want to trust God that it is accurate. Can, you, can I see Psalm 3? Arise, O Lord, save me, O oh my God. For you have struck all my enemies <laughs> on the cheekbone. So this one is now strike them. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. So, so we are using that Psalm. <laughs> and connecting Micah chapter 5, verse 7 to 9. Micah 5, 7 to 9. And Isaiah 26, 11 to 12. Micah 5, 7 to 9. Isaiah 26, 11 to 12. We are using this as spiritual weapons. But the word of God is alive and active. <laughs> to tear down the arrangement of devourers, to break them and to set fire on them. By the grace of God, the oppression of devourers, making you less than what God plans for you. Whatever the devourer is, they are coming to an end if you agree in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is all about your agreement, your commitment. Maybe, maybe by the time you know what devouring is and devourers are, maybe you will understand why this means a whole lot. But the theme this morning is that the devil is a devourer. So what is the meaning of a devourer? What's the meaning? What does it mean to devour? Because to know devourer, it, mean, it means you need to know what devours. <clears throat> the dictionary of English language will talk about devourer in several senses, but the unity of these different senses as it makes sense to us. To devour means to eat up. Say eat up, eat up, eat up. To eat up greedily or angrily. That's what it means to devour. In the context and the sense, we want you to understand. What eats up greedily and angrily, hungrily, eats up with greed. Greed means with, more, with, with hunger for more, not 
ever being satisfied. That's what it means to be devoured or to devour. Eating up with greed, with hunger, with passion, with incessant anger, with greed, with anger, with passion, with hunger. You can eat up something, but that's how you eat up something. It cannot be said that you are devouring something or, you, or something was devoured. Just maybe it's some kind of um, a jebotally eating without much hunger, without greed for more, without, without passion, is still eating, but it is not devouring. But when it comes to devouring, is there is anger in it, there is hunger for more. That means greed, greed in a sense of. Not satisfied. Bendy, bring it, bring it. Oh, that one too. I want to eat that one. I want. So a greedy person is everything, everywhere, everywhere, everything, everywhere. He said that is devouring everything. He starts with one thing, but spreads to another thing. Wants the other one. Wants the other one. Before you know it, the other one, the other one is eating, eating, eating. That's that's it. I don't know if at this point it makes sense, but just rise. Maybe with that understanding, because it is understanding that gives fire to prayer. The prayer you pray without understanding is a prayer without strength. But when you understand it, I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. No, I, I, I know that there was rain. I think it also rained in my sight. I know there was rain by the grace of God. Rain falls everywhere. But how you respond to rain is called attitude. Rain is a universal thing. It falls on every roof. How individuals respond to the rain that falls on everyone is now a function of personal attitude. You can allow rain to rain you down or you can get angry by the rain and rise up. I don't know if I'm communicating. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever eats up angrily, whatever eats up greedily, Whatever eats up incessantly, whatever that eats blessing angrily, whatever that eats joy greedily, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I place a disclaimer. It cannot devour me. It does not eat my joy. It does not eat my health. Whatever has power to eat and that eats blessing, I make a post by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am spared. And whatever is the oppression of the eater in my life terminates now. And now pray that prayer. Say you end now, you no longer, you no longer. I serve quick notice to what eats, to what consumes, what eats angrily. I serve quick notice to what eats passionately, what eats hungrily, what eats greedily. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me hear your amen like fire. We see that. <laughs> we see that there are things that eat, and they don't eat dead things, they eat living things, they eat joy, they eat health, they eat peace. So when we're talking about eating, there is what eats, what dies. But there are things that eat what lives. <laughs> and what is meant for life. These are the devourers we are looking at. 
Let's go back to the text that has been. <laughs> Let's go back to John chapter 10 and verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief does not come except to do what? To steal. After stealing, to do what? Kill means this was alive. That's the devourer. That's the eater. Steals. Kills. Destroys. When I was a little boy in the village, we used to fight with kites. Or are they called kites or hawks or whatever they were? Whatever. Are they hawks or whatever you call them? I don't know. We knew them in the village. We party, you know. And they will fight with them. Sometimes we succeeded. Sometimes they succeeded. They will just see the mother hen with the chicks and just parading and enjoying themselves and this stuff will just come. <laughs> just take one of them alive. Just take one of them alive and you watch it. And you shout and shout and shout. It doesn't make much sense. I'm just going. Devourer. It's what is alive. It's business. Not a dead business. If it's a dead business, devourer is not interested in it. If it's a dead marriage, it's already a dead marriage. The devourer is not interested in it. It's a marriage. So when a, when, a, when the devourer steps into marriage that had been celebrated to be iconic in terms of standard, how marriage should be, and he steps in, devours it, takes joy. One day I have opportunity maybe to teach you give you teachings on death on death because a lot of times we don't really understand that I God gave me some understanding about death some years ago and I preached once preached once in a, a funeral of a mother of a Catholic priest that was invited to preach and if, what I preached about was the other death the other death you see real death when the scripture is talking about death, it's not, it's not ultimately the cessation of life that one day we no longer breathe and burial is conducted. That's not it. That's the fate of humanity. It's just because of mortality, mort, mortuary, all of these things. It's a matter of the flesh. You came in the flesh. The programming is one day you will live. The flesh is not meant to be eternal here, according to the order here. Real death is the plan of God, the life of God that is gone. That's why some people, they go to, they, they leave the world at 50, but the life of God with them lives forever. They are not dead, they were changed. Some people live to 105 and they don't have life. The scripture talks about Lazarus was taken to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man died and he was buried. <laughs> One died, was taken up. Means he did not die. Well, he changed in location, he changed in environment. He was no longer a beggar. He was no longer sick. Nobody will insult him again. But the other one who had everything also died in the sense of mortality, everyone. But that one was what? Buried. Gone. So real death, a lot of people just get angry and just get worried that somebody went for funeral or we are going to go for funeral. And somebody does not have joy, does not have peace, does not have righteousness, does not have holiness does not have a sense of God. Somebody is a dead body walking around and being angry about death. No, the dead of burial is not the dead. 
The real death is everything of God dead in you while you walk around. Joy, dead. Peace, dead. Passion, dead. Zeal, dead. How many of you have zeal here? How many of you have passion? How many of you have commitment? Life without commitment is a bundle of dead or death. Life without passion, life without zeal, life without holiness, without righteousness. You are walking around just because you wake up in the morning and put on shoes and wet and wet trousers and wet tie and walk around and say you are like you are not. <laughs> in moving cups. If you don't have God and come alive, many people even have God. They say they have God. <laughs> Have God show me your God. So one day we'll talk, we'll give teachings about that. Because once you understand this, then you fight for life. You fight for life and you don't worry about what people call death. Those are the things that have defined our lives. And I don't know what. Let me just move on so that I don't get distracted. I have a short time with you. If I have time, I will come back to this point we just made. Okay, let's go to the Bible to find out. What the Bible calls <laughs> devourer to devour. To devour. In that, before we get to what the Bible calls devourer, let's introduce a text. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. Are you taking this seriously? Oh, do. So that you know what has been devoured and what is devouring. And who is the agent's of the devouring, the devouring agent. First Peter chapter 5 from verse 8 to 10. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, my eyes can see clearly. Come on, come on. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, my eyes can see clearly. My ears can hear clearly. In the name of Jesus, my heart is opened and my, my spirit comes alive by the power of your word in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen look at he said be sober this is addressed to believers be sober the word sober sobriety means being free from being, being free from influence influence from substance from intoxication from overeating <laughs> over drinking over sleeping over this over that things that will make you dull make your senses dull make your senses dull make your spiritual sensitivity dead things that will Disconnect your spiritual antenna. Different things that disconnect spiritual antenna. Issue of involvement with drugs, with drinks. Issues of impure sex or sexual acts. Or their variants. Their cousins in pornography. In masturbation. You hear some ministers who, whether you know what spirit is speaking to them or not, whatever, making masturbation look very innocent, like it's not a problem. It's not about what they think, it's about the sobriety. What it does to the spiritual sense, the implication of it to the spirit man. So we are dealing with, because some people will say, I don't drink. But gossip, deals with sobriety sitting down to talk nonsense useless gossip talk about nonsense for us for now is new high new drug sit down with phone just sit down just sit down see somebody so poor does nothing except to press phone press phone just press phone just press phone loses every form of sobriety. No spiritual sensitivity. 
spiritual antenna all plucked off. The scripture says, be sober. When it comes to spiritual warfare, sir, you must understand sobriety. Alertness. Many people have said that here. When we talk about issue of spiritual warfare, they say, it doesn't apply to me because they are dead. Dead, dead antenna. They don't see. They don't hear. They don't feel. They don't perceive what goes on around them. It takes somebody who is sensitive and sober to perceive what happens in the environment. Am I communicating? Some people until a woman until something holds them by the neck. Before they work out, what happened? Because they are not sober. Some people, by the time you come close to the environment, eh, who is there? So some prayer is just spiritual. Who is there? That's it. Some prayer people pray. That sometimes you come alive in the Holy Ghost and begin to speak in tongues without knowing why. It's a spiritual. Who is there? That's sobriety. Spiritual sobriety. Spiritual alertness. And they devil hates it. Why? A thief does not come announced in a normal situation. And he does not come when the day you are ready. Except, it's not normal thief. They just come, they are coming for war. But the scripture says, he comes to steal. And the scripture says, he disguises himself as the angel of what? Light. So that's the devil, the, the secret and the power of the devil is in deceit, deception. He wears camouflage. One creature that looks like the devil physically is a chameleon. Chameleon. And if he's in a place called black, he's black. The devil does not come with horns. You see with red eyes, I'm a devil, no. In the place of prayer is the most tongue-speaking person. In the place of holiness is the holiest of holy. So, he now takes sobriety, spiritual alertness to pay attention. Yeah, I hear you speak in tongues, but I'm paying attention to your tongues. Rise to your feet. And lift up your two hands. Say, Lord, con connect me, connect me, connect me. Just speak those words. Say, Lord, connect me, connect me. Connect me. Whatever that means to you, just say, Lord, connect me. You are not praying. Say, Lord, connect me to the high tension of your spirit. Just connect me, Lord. Connect me, connect me. Lord, connect me, connect, connect me to your highest grade, to your divine greed. Lord, don't connect me to national greed. Lord, connect me to heavenly greed. Nigerian national greed breaks down all the time, but God's greed ah, is eternally stable. Say, so Lord, connect me. Take away insensitivity. Ah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. The Holy Ghost sir, should remind you today that he has not changed his mind about this household. <laughs> he has not. This morning, a lot of conversation in my spirit. I'm trying to let me understand perspective that many people are looking for normal church. That's why church is very boring. Somebody talked about that. Why people don't stay in grace family? People, um, that there's, people don't stay in grace family. Or according to the understanding that people come, but they don't stay. People come, they don't stay. People come and people stay. People also come and people don't stay. Because it depends on what people want. There are people who want a place they can hide and be comfortable. Just do church. 
God said, turn these people into what? An army. Sir, people don't like to fight. People don't like a life. They just want to be fought for. It's here. The people are prophesying over you and you sit down you and all of that. But we are asked to turn those same people who come, who are fearful and afraid and terrified and all of that, turn them into things that people will run away from. Turn them into people that things will run away from. But in order to transition from a fearful person to a terrifying person, uh, a lot of people don't want to pay that price. Paying that price is too much for some people. Come in up and ten years, you know. You know, <laughs> and so you have a lot of ministers who would rather not be known as ministers because when we talk about special forces, people think Great Family is a place. Where I go, I join the department, I serve in the department, sir. <laughs> Sir, I was told, I mentioned it, I have been telling you, turn these people into what? An army. An army. An army. An army, sir. God is looking for people who they will use to deal with issues. Whereas some people are looking for where they will run away from issues. God is looking for people who will use to deal with Satan. Whereas some people are running away from Satan. So this, are, this is a, a language address to those in the army of God. Be sober. Be sober. Every time in the army that people lose sobriety, they suffer casual, casualty. If you watch war movies or what, listen to history or read histories of wars and warfare, people come back from either a victory or a defeat. When they come back from defeat, what makes them lose their sobriety? They are crushed, depressed. They are no longer sensitive. Grumbling and complaining against the commanders, the authorities. Mourning their losses. And they forget about everything. Some get drunk to forget their sorrow. Smoke and import women into their camp to soothe their problem. And then enemy comes back, wipes them off and they are not aware. Or they come back from a mighty victory and they have a party dancing all night, smoking and drinking and getting drunk all night. Their commanders were plenty women and all the boys having their own different men and women smoking and drinking and the enemy tiptoes. <laughs> comes no sensitivity. The guards are not watching. Nobody wants to be let out from the party. Wipes them out. I told you during the 40 days fast, say after such a time, attack comes. You should watch. <laughs> I used to uh, remind the ministers uh, these things. We are, sir, this thing we are sent to raise people. Oh. We are not here to hide people. We are here to raise people. Not to provide a place where people can hide and f run away from the devil. We are here to raise people that will chase the devil away from their destinies and people's destiny. Rise to your feet. Say in the name of Jesus Christ, I am begotten by the Almighty. I am nothing less than mighty. Speak it even if you are lying. Speak lie boldly. Lie boldly. Even if you are lying, lie boldly, confidently. Say I am begotten by the Almighty. I am nothing less than mighty. No, no, no. Shout it loud. Don't pray. Just speak it. Say, I am begotten by the Almighty. I am nothing less than mighty. And nothing will treat me otherwise. Say, I refuse to allow anything. Say it with me. Say, I refuse to allow anything. To treat me less than the Son of the Almighty, less than the mighty in Jesus' name, be seated. Say, be sober, be vigilant. It takes one who is sober to be vigilant. Vigil, the word vigil and vigilance, they are connected. Vigil, what's vigil about? Staying awake in the night. 
<laughs> Ministers, you know, praise God. When by the grace of God the leaks are all settled, we we'll begin to have leak formations taking their own turn. Monthly, weekly, people doing video. We have to stay awake. <laughs> uh, this place is, a, is an army company. And we will achieve this vision. Sometimes it looks like we are not going to anywhere. We are going to somewhere. And we are seeing people rising. We see people rising. And we know it works. It takes a long time, but it works. This place, one of the principal spirits of this place is fear. Fear dwells in Aquaibom State. Fear of witchcraft. Witchcraft. Fear of this, fear of that, fear of that. And how does God solve the problem of fear? Raising fearless people. Turning fearful people into fearless people. When somebody like Gideon was hiding because of the fear of the enemy. So God did not import fearless people from abroad. Is that what the scripture says? Gideon was afraid and hiding. And God said, okay. So we have seen somebody to change the situation. The leader of the fearful. He turned him into a fearless person and changed the world. Sir, that's the mission. That's the mission. So we are not going to change the spiritual ecosystem of this place by providing a place where people will run away from fear and come and stay and enjoy church, enjoy the secure. No, we turn people into aggressors, spiritual aggressors that will be so terrifying that they go back to places where fear terrifies them and fear relocates. And it's going to be by training, the training of the word of God. Have I told you that in August, every day we will be teaching the word of God here? Have I? Oh, I will announce it today. Don't worry. Oh, oh, sorry. I have not told you. <laughs> I have been talking about it. You have not been in church. <laughs> but officially, I will talk about it today. Praise God. Let's move on. <laughs> God said, I should tell you, he has not changed his mind. That he intends to turn ordinary people into, into mighty people. So people who stay, they stay because it belongs to what they see in life. Those who don't stay are people feel that hey, it was in your room. You don't turn a boy into a girl because you need a girl. A boy is a boy. A girl is a girl. Be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. What is he looking for? Seeking whom? He didn't say he's looking for a weak person, a young person. Whom? Anybody can be whom? A bishop can be whom? General of Asia can be among the whom? A wife can be among the whom? Seeking whom? Whomever. Whomever is not sober. Whom? Ever is not vigilant, does not respect who baptize you, does not respect when you started Christianity and the places you have gone on pilgrimage, whether you are JP or JJ. It's looking for whom? That the devil has no respect. I've been telling you this. The devil has no respect for title. The, the, the devil does not, does not respect Pope. He does not respect the bishop, Archbishop of Canterbury. So the devil does not respect Kumui. He does not respect the boy. He does not, he does not respect anybody. If you give him opportunity, he will devour you. So he does not say, oh, I will not touch this one. Is a grandson of Toto and Toto. The more, the more highly ranked you are, the more interested he is. Yes, if he was not interested in, if he was not afraid of Jesus, tell me who's your father. 
If he was not afraid of Jesus, if he was not afraid of Jesus, no, it hurts you. Sorry, sorry. That's not what I wanted to say. If, if the devil did not respect Jesus, was not afraid of him, tell me. Tell me. He met him. He did not just tempt him. He said, look at all of this kingdom is given to me. I give it to whoever. What, bow down and do what? Worship me. Now, is there any song in more than that? The son of God. So how dare you think that you are anything? So when I say the devil does not respect a devil or uh, kumu and people will say, do you want to sit down? So he did not respect Jesus. The, highly, the more highly placed you are, the more connected you are to the heavenly places, the more interested he is to mess you up in order to dishonor the one who sits on the throne. Who told you the devil is interested in your akamba wounds? He is not interested. He fears those who are sober. He fears vigilance. And sobriety, discipline, vigil, staying awake, staying alive, staying conscious, aware of the world, aware of the boundaries drawn by the world, the boundary that makes you not do everything you want to do, how you want to do, the boundary that keeps you in shape and in step with God. He fears that. He fears that not because he does not fear that and then run away from you. He fears that and because of that he comes closer to see what he can do. Hoping tomorrow you will lose the vigilance. That's how people start mighty. After some time they are no longer mighty. I don't know whether you pray for pastors. The other they have to tell you, don't judge me, pray for me. Because if you know what I have to go through because of you, because of the people that are associated with the call, then you will know that you stay awake and pray. Because he does not touch the sheep, the sheepfold until he first of all messes up the, the shepherd. They strike the shepherd and you scatter the sheepfold. A lot of people don't understand this. So you pray for those that God is keeping. This whole thing is a spiritual deep thing. Is it risk? How oh, is it seeking whom he may devour? Let's use that. Let's let's conclude this. Let's conclude this. Let's conclude this. What does it mean to devour? In this scripture, is is written in Greek. The Greek word for Devour <laughs> is catapino. <laughs> Sorry, you tell me you have come again. Catapino is kata, is like kata, is still kata. K A T A P I N O. Combination of two Greek words. Kata. Kata means different things, against and all of that. But in this case, it means down. It means down. Kata means down. K A T A means down. Pino or pino. Depending, P I N O. Pino means to drink. <laughs> so, catapino means to drink down. English says it is to eat up. But in Greek, the original sense of the word that is translated devour here means to do what? To drink down. You know, when you drink something, it goes down, right? When you drink water, water goes down. It goes down in the life of the one who drinks. And the quantity that is left also goes down. Everything being equal. If it is not resupplied, eventually it is over. Don't forget this. It's to drink down. Rise to your feet. Let's do something. Say in the name of Jesus. Whatever is drinking down my life. Whatever is drinking down my joy. Whatever is drinking down God's blessing in my life. Whatever is drinking down God's plan in my life. 
in the name of Jesus I set you on fire and I destroy your oppression you no longer have power to walk in my life you no longer drink me down you no longer drink me down you no longer drink me down in my health in my strength in my wealth in my marriage you no longer drink me down say every agent of drinking down I bring you down pray say I bring down everything designed to bring me down you are not praying everything designed to drink me down every agency an agent of drinking down in the name of Jesus I bring you down I bring you down you no longer you no longer you no longer in the name of Jesus Christ let me hear your amen like fire I hope you take note of this because this is what you pray as you go home. These are the materials for prayer this season. Be seated. So, catapino, catapino means to drink down. It means to swallow. To swallow. To swallow. Like a python not eating. It just swallows. It swallows. So the word devour, seeking whom to devour, means whom to swallow, whom to drink down, whom to swallow down. The word katapaino means to swallow down. It also means to swallow up, to swallow. That's the most important thing here, to drink down down to swallow scripture says the devil your adversary this takes us back to Ephesians chapter 6 that about verse 12 verses 10, 11, 12 talks about for let's see it, verse 12 for we do not wrestle, we do not wrestle against flesh and against what? Blood. But against the adversary, principality and power. While you keep that scripture, you go back to that first Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary. In case you don't understand who the adversary is, the scripture adds it immediately. The devil walks about like a roaring lion in these days of grace doctrine that people are more graceful than the scripture, than, than Paul who wrote, who wrote more about grace in the New Testament. This is nobody, nobody's interested in, in, in talking about the work of Satan and the spiritual world. So no, 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 no. We are so blessed, we are so saved that the devil has, he does not know where we live or does not even exist. <laughs> and all of that, all of that. And the scripture says, be sober, be vigilant, because the enemy is not your grandmother. It's just, it may just be a vessel of devouring. It may not be your father. It may not be your boss. It may not be your daughter. It may not be your friend. It may not be your neighbor. It may not be that person. It's just a vessel that may be just neutral, may just be available, and it's susceptible. And it's susceptible means it can be used because the real adversary, the devil, walks about. Since the devil is a spirit, he needs some, some accommodation. So weak vessels become accommodation. Wicked vessels, those with, with hearts and minds that are attuned to the work of Satan, to the work of the devil, they become vessels. 
and then the enemy, the adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion and the purpose is trying to drink down is trying to swallow up is trying to swallow down it means by the time it's done there is a down there is a swallowing joy is swallowed peace is swallowed job swallowed ministry is swallowed and you just see things just disappear and you don't know where they have disappeared to there is the adversary and people just complain <laughs> my business is having difficulty who is devouring you I, I, I don't understand what is happening in my marriage I, I, I don't understand what's going on with my children my, a woman here talked about because she's been so consistent the husband is a Catholic has never come to Grace Family. But from the beginning, when we started in Ibomo, she does not miss anything. You will know the person I'm talking about, just have not permitted to talk about it. So I've been curious. Why, why? And so when they ask, what of your husband? I see you in church every time. Where is your husband? <laughs> My husband is there. He's a Catholic. He's a Catholic. And so your husband, you people are still married. Yes. <laughs> and you are here in Grace Family. Your husband knows me. <laughs> and just opened up a little one day she just came with an envelope with one of her beautiful daughters to sit down and told me story say what God has used you and talked about a, a daughter that used to do so well in school brilliant in school and all of that and suddenly went to another school now what happens to be a devourer came forth and devout, brought down, brought down, brought down. She talked about how grace intervention just came forth and God restored. So she just kept mentioning things and mentioning things and say, for a long time I have had as a note and a command to come and appreciate you and appreciate the work of God and this call in your life. I brought this envelope. I brought this and with a daughter was sitting down and they, one of the children in, in, the, in the other church didn't even know they were, they were they, they, they was a daughter is now in the school of the Holy Spirit <laughs> and ran to me the other time they asked, ah. so the husband is comfortable as a Catholic allowing her to come because by the grace of God the arrangement of a devourer God uses sign. You know, God doesn't argue with people. Oh, those of you who argue on behalf of God. <laughs> Some people argue. So, me, I don't argue on behalf of God, though. The day God wants to speak, he speaks not in Bibio. Have I told you this before? He does not speak Hausa. He doesn't speak Yoruba. God speaks in signs, in miracles, in power, and wonders. That's God. So, and when he speaks, people can understand that this one is beyond me. I am asking God that in the area of your argument, let God speak his native language. I say in the area of the argument, where there are multiple arguments in your life, let God speak his native language. Let God speak his signs. Let God speak his might. Let God speak his power. Let God speak his miracles. Let God speak his wonders. Shout Jesus. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. This is how it works. The devourer. So you can see a child that has been doing excellently well in school suddenly wakes up, confused, wakes up, lame, paralyzed, not able to study, all sorts of things. What is devouring what? And it can be psychologically explained. Many young people in dormitory are devoured by masturbation. When they reach at that particular stage, that, that spirit 
comes across and takes away concentration. And in most cases, the children of exceptional mind and intelligence. There is a young man who outside this country, I'm not permitted to talk much about it, went outside this country to study a very serious course. Has had to relocate severally, run back to Nigeria, try going back, run back. It, I don't want to talk much about it. And the whole issue is a useless demon that comes through the homosexual into masturbation that messed up his mind could no longer concentrate. Keeps him in prison. I'm talking about what devours. A boy that is known to have been extremely brilliant and excellent in contact. Somebody just tried like somebody trying to attempt to do something with somebody and did not succeed. That became an infection that turned the young man's head upside down. Disorganized him can no longer study. It's done everything. Stayed in the U.S. for years. Came back without nothing. Deferring stories up and down. Trying to reboot to go back now. And just people just trying to be nice about it. Trying to talk about psychology. And, sir, the devil is a devourer. If you are not sober, he enters into your household and devours. Many people, great life and family, and the enemy comes in the devil, devours everywhere sickness. Somebody sat down yesterday to tell me, he said, all of us, there is nobody without sickness in the family. This one with cancer, everyone with terminal sickness. Sir, that is not the plan of God. The devil is a devourer. The devourer. Now, let's conclude this. I've already taken too much time because you need to do the family meeting. I'm giving you perspective so that you don't start praying with this understanding. Today, tomorrow, on Wednesday, on Thursday. For those of you who are vigilant enough, who are sober enough, a lot of you, what I'm talking about, I'm speaking English. I'm just such a fool. I'm just doing a work of a pastor. You don't have to pray about it and all of that. I pray for you. I don't stop praying for you. Pray for you one day, you'll be sober. Pray for you, you'll be so vigilant. Sir, hard work is not success. <laughs> You know, hard work is not success. <laughs> Meaningful work is success. And it takes more than hard labor to have meaningful work. <laughs> Glory. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Rise to your feet. Whatever devours meaning, whatever takes meaning out of your work and leaves you with heart in the work and takes meaning out of the work and leaves heart in the work that you work hard but it's not meaningful let the devourer be devoured in the name of Jesus raise your right hand so Father in the name of Jesus by the fire of your spirit devour the devourer of my life devour what devours my life devour what devours my jaw devour let your fire devour let your fire devour let your fire devour you are not praying let your fire devour what devours Let your fire devour what devours. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear your amen like fire. Be seated. Let me share with few things and I'm ending with this. 
The devil wants to devour about three, four, five, six things the devil wants to devour in your life. And because of this that he wants to devour, he goes about goes about creating trouble here and there and there. He eats up here and there. There are things he targets. Number one, as a child of God, the devil targets your love for God. So when as a child of God, this is what I'm talking about, those who even, those who have relationship, any form of relationship with God. For those who don't have relationship with God, they are dead. So it doesn't even apply to them yet. They need to come back to come to be raised to life. And then we can start from there. So as a child of God, the devil is interested in your love for God. And the scripture says in a time like this season we are living in, the love of God will grow cold. So right now people are not operating from the place of loving God. It's loving self. Self-preservation. Loving God means you can make sacrifice. When you love somebody, you make sacrifice for somebody. Love implies sacrifice. So when you find it difficult to make any sacrifice, adjustment that brings about sacrifice and pain to your personal convenience and pleasure, on account of God, if you resist that, if that doesn't make sense at all, if you, it, it is irritating and all of that, it means you don't have any love for God. The devil is interested in that. In many people, he has succeeded they are succeeded in destroying, devouring their love for God. Number two, the devil targets your faith in God. Your love in God, your faith in God. So, when the devil attacks your health, he devours health because he wants to destroy your love for God, destroy your faith in God, destroy your hope expectation from God when he scatters finances he comes, raises trouble in your finances, raises trouble in your health, it's not about just your health because the devil knows your health is just physical and one day you will leave this world like I said and when you leave this world, cancer is no longer cancerous, blood pressure is no longer, it's not high when you are dead and gone so the devil is not, the devil is not worried. The devil does not attack your health for your health's sake. He does not attack your finances for your finances' sake. The devil does not attack your relationship because these are some of the things that he devours. He, had, he devours the, the loving relationship between husband and wife. Some husbands and wives sitting down here, they are like Iraq and Iran. No cordiality. Everything is formality. Amen, young, for men young go. Everything is formal. They raise memo. They use memo to communicate. Like I sent a message to you yesterday, reference yesterday's message. I told you the school fees of the children outstanding is 500,000 naira. Just to remind you, you have not yet responded. <laughs> That's husband and wife. The devil has devoured their relationship. But it's not that relationship that is interested in. Their love for God. Their faith in God. Their zeal for God. Their service in God. Their eternal life in God. That's the plan of the devil. Go back to John chapter 10 verse 10. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy in hellfire. So when he attacks health... It is so that after some time you say, but does God still love me? Ah, leave me. All this one that I've been doing for God, look at how we are. Look at, oh, somebody has died. Look at this person that was even closer to God and that served God. If this happened like this, so what is the use of this? And the devil is devouring. He's a liar. So when you hear things like that, you know, these are people in the pocket of the enemy. That's why be careful who speaks to your hearing. That's just be careful. It's not every conversation you should be involved in. There are certain things you don't respond to. So he goes about devouring, attacking us, 
sickness here and there. And it just breaks you. Finances scattered and all of that. And all of this then is easier than to be pushed into. But you can be in Freemason. And you know, it just doesn't. So, so Bishop is in Freemason. Some of these priests, some of these pastors, some of these people. If you, if you go abroad, you know, some bishops are open Freemason. But it is you people in Africa that take it seriously. I don't know. Because there is pressure. You know, this whole thing is about relationship. It gives you access in politics and whatever. So it's not a problem. <laughs> Thou shalt have no other God. So this is a So enemy, he, he puts you under pressure. Tight pressure here and there that you will need ways of escape because it's attacking your love for God, your faith in God, your zeal for God. So that when the issue of zeal, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about zeal. Look at the issue of zeal for God. <laughs> zeal for God passion for God faith in God and love in God so find out where is your zeal for God where is your passion for God so when we talk about Devara, a lot of things we just think about is financial Devara, Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10, you know give time and Devara is only a financial Devara, the, the, the deep one that the devil is attacking in this hard time is your zeal. Your passion for God, that is what is called death. So he kills you while you still speak in tongues. Some people have a job and their zeal for God is swept away. Their passion swept away. Everything, their faith, everything is gone. And they think, oh, it's just, you know, the new condition, you know, my new job, my new this, my new do. explanation. Many years ago, as a young boy, I was not yet even a believer. When Kumu, he preached about the spirit called, it doesn't matter. I don't know whether so, you people have heard it. It doesn't, there is a spirit called, it doesn't matter. It's insensitivity. So today, I just want to ask you to rise to your feet. The attempt today had been to open your eyes to know that many things going on in your life actually shows that the devourer has been walking. The devourer has taken your joy in marriage and you are comfortable. And you have reasons not to greet your wife, not to reconcile. You have reasons not to, not to, uh, you have reasons. You have so many reasons. But the only reason that you must know today is that the devourer has stolen something and there is an interest, a larger interest is to wreck the plan of God and your eternal salvation. But by the grace of God, we're going to stand in this house today and throw out this week on Thursday, Friday, Saturday and attack what devours your health. Attack what attacks your relationship what devours the joy and the pleasure in your relationship what attacks your children you know many, many parents run to places they shouldn't go to because of children because of their children they can tell you enemy make it right here make me now and then knock have you heard that before have, have you seen it before have you entered it before okay at least you understand what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. At least it matters. At least, at least you know what I'm talking about. By the grace of God, we will see on Thursday the recommendation. How are we going to fight? That's what we'll look at from Thursday, Friday. How do we engage the devourer? Am I communicating? Yeah. So today, the result today is that the enemy is hiding Crawling around like a roaring lion. Seeking whom to devour. Today we are going to speak that whatever had been eaten up shall be restored. Yes. Let me predict what I expect to happen. That after this ministry, marriages will go back home today better. Yes. Families will go back today united. Yes. The businesses will meet up this week. That health, those 
whose health condition had been the devouring activity of Satan. At this communion, I don't know what you want to receive, but we are going to receive solution to the devouring teeth of Satan. And we, by the name of Jesus, by the finished work on the cross, we're going to break the bone, we're going to break the yoke, we're going to break the head. I want you to raise your right hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I refuse to allow my faith go. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you this morning. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, lift up your two hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you this morning. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, for mercy in any way. I have not been sober. I have not been watchful in any way. I have not been vigilant. There by opening the door for the devourer. So Lord, I return in repentance. Pray that prayer. It begins with repentance. I return in repentance. In any way I have been living. In any way I have been living. That empowered the devourer. In any way that I have been living. Empowering the devourer. In any way I have been operating, thereby empowering the devourer. Lord, I repent. I repent of every sin, known or unknown. Lord, I repent. I repent from my insensitivity, my lack of zeal, my lack of commitment and dedication. Lord, I turn. I turn back to you. Speak those words. Go ahead and speak. Go ahead and speak. Say, Lord, I repent totally. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I accept you as the perfection of God's armor. You are my salvation. In you, I am made righteous. I am made holy. Say in you I am separated from darkness. I embrace the blood that you shed on the cross. I embrace your death by which my own death has been paid for. Say I embrace the wounds by which I have been healed. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I embrace your judgments by which I have been acquitted, by which I have been set free from condemnation. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I embrace you as my life. I accept you as my new life, my foundation, my righteousness, my armor, my holiness, my sonship. Say, fill me with your spirit. So fill me with your spirit. Say by your spirit. Arise. I rise against the adversary. The devouring of joy. The devouring of my life. I come against you, Satan. By the name of Jesus. Begin to bring it down. Whether it is in your health. Say you devil, the evil, the ancient liar. From today, you no longer devour me. My health is free. My marriage is free. My household is free. Whoever is secretly walking as an agent, whoever is walking as a secret agent of the devourer in my life, let fire break out. Pray. Whoever is being used 
prophetly to perpetrate the devouring work of Satan in my life. I break from you. I break your spell. I break your connection. I break your hold. 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 Randa Kapole Mazia Tobre Lema Sika Pala Talabrolata. My spirit is free from the devourer. My soul is free from the devourer. My body is free from the devourer. My call is free from the devourer. My ministry is free from the devourer. My generation is free from the devourer. My finance is free from the devourer. My job free from the devourer. Speak, say from today, my business is slashed from the jaw of the devourer. My children are delivered from the hands of the devourer. stop praying. I worship you. I worship you. Say my daughter is free from the devourer. My womb is free from the devourer. My relationship is free from the devourer. My future snatch from the hand of the devourer. Mm, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is soon. My neighborhood free from the devourer. My territory free from the devourer. I banish sickness. I banish sickness from this house. I banish premature death from this house. I banish barrenness from this house. I banish cancer. I banish cancer. I banish cancer from your system. What devour shall no longer devour? What devour shall no longer devour? Say, Lord, give me help against the devourer. Waymaker. My God, that is who you are. We make a miracle walk, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come down and consume the devouring spirits. Sickness that devours be devoured by the fire of God. 
witness that devours be devoured. Let the devouring elements of hell be devoured by the fire of God. Scripture says it's a continuing fire.